What you're seeing on screen here is a bunch of woke liberal students dressed up as clowns in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, just a couple of days ago in order to protest Candace Owens speaking at a Turning Point USA event. So that's what we're going to watch in this video. Candace Owens debating these queer woke clowns. Let's get into it. Guys, you, the, uh, to the people that are dressed up as clowns, you guys can literally come to the front. I'm just going to let them go first, just because I promised them, and then... Thank you. All right, listen, I have to hold the mic, okay? Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay, who's going first? Is there still a mask policy here? No. Hi. Pardon? I just want to make sure I can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, great. Okay. So you like to learn, right? Um, what did you learn from the Christchurch mosque shooting where 51 people died at the hands of someone who was influenced by you? above all other people. How did you change your rhetoric after this person shot 51 people? Great question. Um, so what she is referencing, one of the craziest media firestorms I've ever been in in my life, um, in New Zealand is what she's talking about. There was a mosque shooting, and at 51, I'll take your number for it, people lost their lives. And apparently, and I actually haven't followed up on the story because I've never been to New Zealand. I don't talk about mosques. I don't talk about Muslims. So it would be very weird if this would have anything to do with me. But apparently, they said that there was an online manifesto. I don't even know if that was officially attributed or if that was just early, early press. But they found a manifesto of the shooter online somewhere. Again, this was alleged early. I don't know if they've since debunked that. And apparently, the person listed Nelson Mandela as his number one inspiration, alongside Spyro the Dragon, which I believe is a child's cartoon, Spyro the Dragon, maybe it's a video game, I don't know, and uh, Candace Owens. Yeah, you know, I didn't feel like there was a lesson other than people are crazy, and we shouldn't give credence to homicidal maniacs when they're putting together cartoons and people that fought against apartheid plus a random American in their thought process. So I learned that that was clearly an ill person and that any person who believed or gave credence to a manifesto should probably re-examine why that is. That's what I learned. Thank you very much for your question. Next. It's the next person, so we have a long line. My clown, that was a silly question. And Candace always, she's not out there inciting violence. I remember this case, this was a long time ago. I actually made a video about it where she debated these two woke liberal white women in Congress about it. People love to take stuff out of context. And at the end of the day, context freaking matters because when you put out as much content as somebody like Candace Owens puts out, hours and hours every day be very easy it's like joe rogan it's easy to take a small clip of something patch it together and make it look incriminating let's get to the next clown hey miss girl uh, hey miss girl um sorry that was so funny i actually have here i was talking to someone outside mm -hmm. it was like one of your merch people i don't know Sorry, could you just be clear? It's a little hard. Um, I was you. talking to, oh my God. That's good. No, that's good. I was no, talking to one of your merch people or like something outside. And I mentioned that, um, I don't know if you know this about Pittsburgh. It's a very Jewish population. It's awesome. We have great food. Pittsburgh. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Anyways, um, I don't know if he knows about our school. Yeah, very Jewish. Great. Um, so I asked him, I was like, are you sure? you want to bring Candace Owens in here? Because if I remembered correctly, and in my, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I might have forgotten. I was like, you did say something about Hitler once that was weird. And he said, do you have a source? And I was like, hold on. So I got a source. Mm -hmm. I showed it to him. He was like, that's the hill. It's a, like a tabloid. I was like, okay, that's fair. I looked it up. Um, my first question is, do you trust Newsweek.com? Do I trust Newsweek.com? Oh, you, you can just get to your question. Let's just pretend that whatever you read was legitimate and just ask the question. Um, I can actually play your response. Uh, just, just ask the question. It's fine. Well, whatever you read is legitimate. I'm not going to like try to debunk. Just tell me what it said and ask the question. I know. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, it's your words here. Uh, no, okay, but like, just ask, let's just get to your question. Okay. Here's the preamble. I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. Okay. I think that the definition gets poisoned by elitists that actually want globalism. 
Mm, okay. Seems a lot like, you know. Globalism is what I don't want. Whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, at least in America, is Hitler. Okay, you could stop there, but it's okay if Hitler just wanted to make America great and have, uh, oh my God. Oh, that was a really funny thing. Can you just, can you just get to your question? All right, ask, ask yeah, question. do you have a question? You have it's, it, yeah, it kind of feels like a filibuster. It's okay if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well. Mm -hmm. It says here, adding that it would be problematic if he, quote, had dreams outside of Germany. Then the political commentator said that Hitler wanted to globalize and said she doesn't really have an issue with nationalism. He was okay. a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. Okay. The problem Which, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside Germany. Okay. He wanted to globalize. Do you have a question? What's your question? My question is, do you stand by that? What did she say? Do you stand by that? Okay, thank you. I'm so glad we got there. <laughs> it's just amazing. Okay, so everybody has seen this, and actually, I'm sure a lot of you watched my episode yesterday, so her timing is definitely great, where I had a rabbi on who brought this up. Canlis said Hitler was okay. You probably have seen the viral clip of me in Congress, where a congressman tried to say, Canlis said Hitler was okay, and that is definitively not what happened. Actually, I was speaking on stage alongside Charlie Kirk. Uh, rather, ironically, there was a room filled with Jewish people, including a Jewish journalist who interviewed me that night, and when I said whatever I said on stage, nobody cared. That was in November 2018. And then, four months after that, in 2019, some journalists pulled out the clip out of t context and tried to make it seem like I was saying Hitler was okay. So let me tell you what actually happened on that night. Uh, a person rose their hand in the audience after we gave a speech about, and obviously this is during the MAGA years, about this you know, need to return to having an identity, you know, a national identity. And a woman asked the question, you know, would you say that you're a nationalist? Because I feel like people are sort of afraid to embrace that term. And so I answered her, and I said, I don't have a problem with the word nationalism. Actually, I think a lot of the times the reason why nationalism, the idea of caring about having like, your, your nation's identity and fighting for policies that are pretty much America first, uh, gets poisoned because people wrongly attribute nationalism to Adolf Hitler. It's not like he was just some guy that was in Germany saying, oh, I just want to make Germany great. And then I went on to say, obviously, he invaded Poland. He had globalist ambitions. Like, none of this was okay. That was the end of it. <laughs> but of course, when you pull it out of context and you're a journalist who's trying to smear someone, you try to make it seem like the person, I didn't even mention the word Jews. I mean, there's no there's even a question about whether we were talking about Jewish people, the Holocaust, nothing. We were simply talking about the word nationalism and why people have hesitancy when they say that they are a nationalist or when they say that they're America first or whatever. So that was it. That was the end of it. There was, there was no talk about saying Hitler was okay or this was great. It was just a topic about whether or not nationalism is rightly attributed or, or, or whether or not it is a dirty word. So I hope that provides some clarity for you. No, no. Your question was like 20 minutes. Sorry, next. No, no, I think no, we've no. given you really more than enough time. And this here is another topic that I made a video on when she was debating Ted Lieu. And he used a very small clip of what she said about nationalism, about Hitler, and pretty much tried to put a hit piece out on her. And just like she said, context matters, intent matters for all these things. That happened to Jordan Peterson, too, with what he's going through in Canada. He has to go to court. Somebody made a complaint, and they filed in their complaint against him stuff that he said on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's been on there four or five times. You know, three hour conversations. You don't have to like somebody, but you're not allowed to just go out and assassinate somebody's character by clipping together a few pieces of conversation that they've said and completely put it out of context into the world so that other people can form an opinion based on this false information that you're giving them. Can't do that. Let's get back to the next clown. Next. All right, so. Hi, Kelly. No, oh, I was just. Okay, so I'm going to bring up something that you previously had said in the past, but you also brought up again in this speech, so it is relevant. You had talked about climate cooling. Well, actually, wait, before I do, I wish for your health, your continued health, the health of your husband and children. Thank all that you, that's very stuff. sweet. I just want that. I always try to start with that. Um, you had said to Bill Maher on Club Random about climate cooling, and you again brought that up. Um, and... Bill pushed back on that, rightfully so, about how climate cooling wasn't ever really used in a large academic sense or a governmental sense. 
So I was just wondering if you would be able to tell me like any level of citation where that climate cooling comes into context outside yeah. of the geological formation of volcanoes, which is does cause a climate cooling effect due to the ash coming into the atmosphere causing extreme ex extermination events. So I'm not able to provide you a citation because I'm on stage handing, holding a microphone. What I said to you is that if you speak to people of prior generations, they'll tell you that their scare was different. I think it was the generation of the 70s uh, who were told that the climate was going to cool and that freezing was a risk. Now, I can't tell you what happened in their classrooms. Obviously, I wasn't in there, but I can tell you that I bet if you asked around to some adults, they would tell you that they heard, there's some nodding their head right now about global cooling. So I don't know what else to tell you other than people say that that was their scare in the 1970s. I, I, I wasn't making a defense for cooling or warming. I was just telling you that every time you are in a, a classroom and you're in high school, there's always a different climate scare that they're trying to tell you. And they've now finally landed on in your generation climate change. So I, I'm not you know, debating you on cooling. I can just tell you that they got it wrong and then the earth started warming and then they got it wrong again because the earth started cooling and now they've landed on climate change. So I hope that clarifies what I was talking about, just the generational change. Thank you. Okay, thank you. For future reference, that clown says, try to back this stuff up. Listen, you're taking a conversation that she had on a two-hour podcast with Bill Maher. It's a conversation. She's not putting out an article. She was giving her opinion. And listen, Bill Maher, on his own podcast, he gets owned every time he puts out a podcast. This is how you can tell that some of these people on the left, which Bill Maher is, when he does his late-night show... It's very scripted, and he's got writers to give him his opinions and all that stuff. So he sounds, I think, smarter than he is. And I have nothing against Bill Maher. He's not necessarily somebody whose content I would consume, but I watch this because some of the guests I like. And he's always getting owned. Candace owned him. And I watched the one with uh, the actor that plays Reacher, that big guy. I forget his name. He's a very Christian man. He owned Bill Maher. Patrick Bed David recently crushed Bill Maher on his own show. Jillian Michaels, the trainer, crushed him. But again, it was just a conversation they were having on a podcast. They're not putting anything in writing here. Let's get back to it. Thank you. Let's get one more. Make it quick. My bad. You said that sex ed effectively sexualized children. And yeah. I was wondering if you had ever heard of the case in Delaware, close to where you're from in Connecticut where a 10-year-old girl was able to finally tell her mother that she was being sexually abused by her father because she was able to learn sex ed from the It's Perfectly Normal book. Would you like to comment on that, please? Yeah, sure. So one example does not mean that it impacts the majority at large. I would very much like to believe and know that the majority of people are not 10 years old being you know, sexually molested by their parents. What you're doing right now is pretty much what the government does. They find one extreme example and try to make everybody fearful that this is going on all the time. This is actually how they introduce sex ed. Everybody's just doing it, and that actually wasn't true. It's never in everybody. Can you find a somebody? Sure. What is the goal of government? Is there ever going to be something that's perfect? Can you create perfect laws? No, there's always going to be exceptions. You've got to create the rule. You can't have the rule based on exceptions. You know, there are exceptional things that happen all the time. You know, if we said that, you know, one person who got their license when they were age 21 got into a wreck on the day that they got their license, well, so nobody's allowed to get their license, that would be crazy. It's crazy. You have to talk about what the majority is. You have to talk about the, the majority percentage of experiences. And it is a fact that within 10 years after introducing sex education, the stats completely flipped and the majority of kids were graduating without their virginity, as opposed to prior to that when it was a, a, diff, a very different society. Also, what you could say had an impact was that we used to teach the Bible at school. Like people were basically, you know, Christian. There was a lot more Christianity in the classroom, and that got removed after some lawsuits. I believe that was in the, the mid '60s that went all the way to the Supreme Court. But again, we the goal of a government is to govern for the whole, not the you know fringe minority of circumstances that happen doesn't make them any less sad or any less awful, but you can't then base laws and everything that you're doing on them. Hope that helps. Oh, yes. No, I don't care. I don't care. You can only ask. Yeah, you got. You've already asked a question, so we're going to go to the next one. Yeah, when we make these laws, that's why a lot of people get so upset about the LGBTQ trans laws, is because we're changing 
society to please a very small group of people. When laws should be like cafeteria food, right? You're feeding the masses in a cafeteria at school. If a couple of kids are allergic to a certain odd types of food, too bad. They're going to have to bring their own lunch. You're, you can't change the whole cafeteria setting just for a couple of kids. It's the same idea with laws. You build your laws around most of the people most of the time. On this channel, we watch a lot of video about pro-life versus pro-choice. And the pro-choice people will always bring up this very small, less than 0.5% of, well, what if grape is involved or incest is involved? It's, yeah, at that point we can talk about it, but you can't build laws and have arguments about these very small extreme cases. You have to talk again about most people most of the time. That's how society works. And at the end of the day, you also have to use facts because if you use anecdotal evidence in a debate or when you're making laws, anecdotally, two people can debate each other and just have completely different anecdotal evidence, anecdotal stories, but those are not rooted in fact. They're just what happens to you. Kind of like when we talk about racism. Is America a racist country? I would say no. Are there racist people? Could you have been the victim of racism? Absolutely. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed and I will catch you all in the next video video peace out everybody i'll say a quick thing here i'm guessing they're dressed as clowns because of the internet they don't want to be on uh, youtube videos like this one or they don't want to be on the live they don't want to be on the turning point usa website i'm gonna assume that's why because if that's not why i do think if you're going to make an argument for anything you should show up prepared show up looking decent and it doesn't make your opinion any more valid or less valid but it does have an impact on how seriously people are going to take you when they first see you. Impressions do matter, whether people want to believe that or not. If you dress good and you look the part and you do a bit of research and you, ha you ask an educated question, it won't really matter if the person agrees with you or not. You can have different points of view. That's what we should be having. But the left doesn't want to debate. That's why Candace Owens is out here debating students and not teachers, because academics don't want to get quote unquote owned because they know that these woke ideologies have no legs to stand on. They're like a house of cards. They just crumble. Anyways, let's get back to the video.